What's up, tubers? I've had my juiced hyper scorpion for about 220 miles, a little bit over a week. I was gone for a week, so I'm not counting that week. And it's time for a build quality review. Now, as you can tell by looking at this, there's a lot of stuff I left off of it and I threw away in the box, such as fenders, every one of those stupid reflectors and other things. But at the end of the video, I'll uh, link you to the playlist of all my Juiced Bike Hyper Scorpion videos uh, that I have and that will be coming out. So you'll be able to see them there. But for right now, let's get on with the review, right? Positives and negatives. Those of y'all that know me know I'm a negative guy. My glass is half empty. And I'm always trying to fill it because I'm trying to make my life better. So on this, we're going to start with the positives because that should be pretty short and pretty simple. The first positive that I noticed, the turn signals. They got a little bit of flex in them. I'm not going to flex them too much. But where that comes in handy is where you bump it up against another vehicle or when you wreck the bike or lay it down, these things are not going to break on the least bit of impact. It's going to take a little bit more impact. Same applies to the rear turn signals, both of them. Got some flex in it. And they are a little bit loose. That's interesting. We'll put that on the negative list. Next on the list is what I'm calling the sprocket protector. Chain guard ring. This bike is heavy AF. This is going to come in handy for you. It already has come in handy for me. I can see a couple of scrapes on there. I know where I hit that. You are not going to be able to wheelie this bike over obstacles or curbs. Your curb is going to hit down there and it's going to protect your chain and your sprocket and this bash guard, I think that's what it's properly called, is going to take some of the abuse. The ergonomics of this is nice enough and I like to ride a lot just standing up like this. Balanced hard to do this. Oh, I, got, I know how I can do this. If I lean against the wall. Here we go. Alright, I like riding like this. Standing up tall, my arms reach down, hold the, hold the handlebars, and I feel centered and balanced on the bike. It's got a good feel like this and it allows me to comfortably see ahead of me over cars over people whatever's in my way do you know what these rubber things are that are in the middle of <clears throat> that are in the middle of the fork they slide up and down do you know what those are for it's pretty nice if you think about it but what they are is they're I'm gonna call them bumpers but they're actually bump stops. And if you've got them properly aligned, proper height, they're going to stop your steering left and right on the frame with a little cushion. Has anybody noticed the position of the kickstand? Here's what I like about that. If you've had other bikes, now when you spin these around, it would stop and hit on the kickstand, which would normally be right down there, and it would lock up about right there. The other thing that this allows us to do is, watch this. Because this bike is heavy AF, you can roll it backwards, and as you're rolling it backwards, 
This does not interfere with the kickstand. I find that very nice because this bike is heavy AF. Okay, I told you the list of positives was short. And this is the last thing on there. The horn. The horn is loud AF. I find that nice, but what you need to do is you need to adjust your distance in timing people that are walking double wide on the single wide track. You want to give them notice. You got to give it, you know, a couple hundred feet back so it's not blasting in their ears. I have been told many times already, nice horn, when I've given people notice far enough in advance where it doesn't startles them. If you wait until you're six feet behind them, they're going to jump. They could jump in your way. They could jump out of the way. They could hurt themselves. So be careful with that. Hope you're ready for the negatives. My advice to you is going to be to Get you a cold one, a bowl of whatever your favorite stuff is. Sit down and relax because this may end up being a little bit longer than we are both expecting. The front hydraulic line. They cut every corner they could when it came to consumable links of something. That's another thing we'll get to in a little bit. This should, this is really tight. It should have a little bit more of a loop here and then it should connect a little bit lower than the first connection point up here on the upper fork. I understand China's bullshit. Everything about their culture is to save money and forget about quality. Their bean counters are saying, hey, well, if we save an inch of line per brake, and there's two brakes per bike, times 2,000 bikes, that's equals to 333 feet. 333 feet is going to pay the wages of three eight-year-old China slave labor girls for a week. I don't think there's any quality control in China. When I received the bike, all of the cables were on the back side of the handlebars. It had been assembled that way. The horn, how the bottom part of the horn mounts to the top L bracket was reversed, forcing you, when you put this on, to have the horn facing forward, it's stuck out over here. Again, no quality control, no supervision, and the poor little eight-year-old girls in the slave labor camps, they don't, they don't know what they're even assembling. Okay, the shifter. Eight-speed shifter. Revo shift. Shimano. Bottom of the line of their components made in China. It's on upside down. It's a minor issue. I actually found a workaround mentally and I'll put a video link in the upper right corner if you want to click on that to see where I'm coming from. But it actually works for me. I don't look at that the way it's positioned uh, with everything else on here, uh, you got to be have line of sight from down at this angle instead of up here to see the numbers anyways. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is a design miss. The front brake disc brakes squeal like a pig. I'm still working on a complete fix for it, but right now I've lowered the squeal. And by doing that, what I did was 
and I didn't make a video for it because I'm just not 100% confident in it yet, is I, re I took these two mounting bolts out, pulled the, the uh, caliper off, I sanded the mounting part of the fork. My thought was that when they spray paint this, that paint builds up on there and it takes the uh, angles a little bit out of tolerance. So I sanded that down and then before you tighten these bolts all the way back up, squeeze on the handbrake and then right there in the middle of the T on Tektro, you push on there at the same time. You force this whole thing, the whole caliper into the rotor and then tighten down these bolts. I also removed the pads and sanded them on a orbital sander. I don't know if that did or didn't do anything, but I minimalized it. I've got new pads on order, so I will have videos up when and if I find a solution for the brake squeal. It might mean a matter of replacing the rotor and the caliper completely, which is going to piss me off on a new bike. Have I mentioned that this bike is heavy AF? And I mean really heavy AF. The 1000 watt hub motor. Get some random noises. And it's hard for me to describe. It's hard for me to pinpoint exactly when and where. It's so random. But it almost sounds like stuff's not geared right or there's rubbing going on. I'm not 100% sure what it is. I know it's not coming from the brakes and I know it's not coming from the pedaling because it does it when I'm under throttle. The rear derailleur, I don't know why, for some reason it took me you know, 50 miles and three or four days before it would go into the lowest cog. Uh, I believe it's called eighth gear, the little, little bitty sprocket, that little one there. It seemed to have fixed itself and shifting is, uh, no, no complaints really from the shifting. I don't think I've ever used these top two. I think those are for when you got to get home and you're 100% out of juiced battery. The advanced matrix display. This is buggy as crap and the manual that it comes with that you get online here, it's got a date on it of 12 1 of 17 so it's approaching four years old it has not been updated the manual is buggy itself a lot of things don't work as described if they work at all now i had problems with the cruise control i figured out how how to make that work and right now the problem i'm having is with activating or deactivating the LED headlight and daytime running light. According to the book, to turn off the LED light, push and hold the assist up button for two seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still nothing. The light never goes off or on. It's still off. It's still on, I mean. Nothing you can do with that. I have not figured out a workaround on that. Everybody's biggest concern really should be if there was a patch or an upgrade for the controller, there's no way to get it. There's no USB, there's no wireless, there's no SD card slot. There's no way to get this reset or upgraded or updated or anything. I can't remember if I mentioned yet to you 
that this bike is heavy AF. Did I tell you that yet? I honestly believe that the ergonomics of this bike, the way it is, is designed for a small, tiny, Asian family of four. <laughs> now, let's be honest. We all know Asians are petite. They're smaller than us Americans. But the hand grips are small. I measured these compared to the hand grips on my Harley and on my mountain bike. And these are like two millimeters smaller. The pedals are too narrow. By that I mean they're too close together. Maybe it's a man thing and because of our junk we need them out a little bit further. This is fixable with real pedals. Let's be honest, this is an entry-level bike with all entry-level components. These pedals, if you were to buy them from a China distributor, probably cost you a buck and a half a piece. I measured these pedals to the pedals on both of my mountain bikes. One of my mountain bikes is approaching, gosh, I hate saying this, was it 40 years old from 1983? And I measured from the face of the crank to the center of the pedal. My pedals on both of those mountain bikes are a half inch further out. It's fixable with an extension that I've got on order. It will be a mod in a video coming up. Make sure you subscribe. That will push the pedals out further. And I'm also in the market of looking for more pedals. But what I'm getting at is when I'm comfortable riding, it's almost like the center of my foot is out here on the edge. Does that make sense to you? I hope so. There are reports online of young ladies that are five feet tall that can flat feet themselves from this seat. I think this is designed for little Asian people. The seat is uncomfortable AF. An afterthought after people realized that it was too short, Juice comes up with a two inch extension. I'm not buying that because raising an uncomfortable seat still leaves me with an uncomfortable seat and I'm not playing that game. I hadn't seen any solutions yet. I see a lot of people online in the forums trying to come up with ghetto solutions but uh, for right now at 511 for me I'm most comfortable sitting back here to where I can feel the bar touching not forcing into my backbone but it's back there it's just not comfortable so I don't know if it's too much boom the wrong kind of foam, the shape of it. I'm still going back to my original concept of this bike is designed for little bitty Asian girls. And let's be honest, Asian girls aren't known for their butts. They're basically back from their shoulders down to their knees. The license plate bracket. Okay, I understand what Juiced is trying to do. They're trying to sell this mass produced in China and India and maybe even what is it the Netherlands Amsterdam where people ride bikes more than as Americans do but I'm not putting a license plate on there I did find a mod that worked for me I'll put a link in the upper right corner so you can see what I did but I chopped it off and I still have available two mounting holes should I want to do something with it? More audio problems. The problem here is the headlight guts, the assembly inside the LEDs were not plumb with the 
with the circle and we're off by about two or three degrees. Now I know this is a new bike, but there's no reason that I should have to be getting inside there to fix that cant. So you got to take off the two adjusting nuts on each side that adjust the up and down. And then there's two Phillips screws on the bottom that take the front ring off. And then you got to unplug it from the wiring harness. And then you can take a screwdriver or pliers and twist it to line it up to be straight and plumb with the bike when it's straight up and down on the ground. A little bit of a pain in the ass and it should not have been required to be done. The ergonomics of this are not designed for pedaling for long distances. Plain, short, and simple. The raised seat extension was an afterthought. I think this bike was really a design build. Uh, and if you're in construction, you know what design build is. And if you're not, what design build means, you start building and you design it as you go. You cannot pedal while standing up on this bike. The bike does not allow you to do this. I can see how this bike would suit a family of four people easily. I can see those, you've seen those pictures online of the Asians and Indians uh, with, you know, a baby in the, sitting on the headlamp, another one in the handlebars, one in front of mama and two behind her. Uh, I think that's what this bike is made for. Ah, big sigh. More mic problems. What I'm pointing out here is the welds on the JB bike. If you look in the upper left corner, you'll see pictures of real professional looking aluminum welds on bikes and other aluminum fittings. Look at these freeze frame it and go outside and look at the welds on your JB Hyper Scorpion or Scorpion. The welds here are not near the quality of the professional welds. But let's think about this in reality. You've got 10 year old Asian girls who have graduated from their slave labor camp of assembling cables on handlebars to welding. And they are learning on your juiced bike hyper scrambler. Once they get proficient and good and can make welds like in the upper left corner, they're going to be shipped off to the nuclear facilities and bomb making and pipelines. This really is a bird's nest. Actually, it's worse than a bird's nest. A bird would have more pride in building their nest. Cable management. Okay, now let's take off my USB cable that goes for my GoPro. But these things are just a total clusterfuck. And right about here, I had a total clusterfuck on my microphone cutting out. I guess the batteries died. But man, you know what I'm talking about. Look at all your cables. They're just dangling in places. They're sloppy. They're slack in some. The others are tight. All of the hydraulic cables for your brakes are too tight it is very ugly no pride and if you've seen a rad runner bike those cables are managed a lot better and hey Tora that's your competition dude the lack of cable management continues on to the bottom set uh, if you look down underneath there, I couldn't get the camera underneath there. It's fugly down there. It's really a shame. The bike's too heavy for me to lift it up and twist it over. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. But you know what I'm talking about. You've seen it. Cable management on this bike is piss poor at best. Another thing, and I'm being picky here, the USB cover on the USB charger mine came with about a nick in it and it's already cutting through about a third of the way on the little 
catch keep thing. It's not a big deal. I'm not expecting this thing to last. And I usually leave something plugged in there. My bike's not left outside in the rain. So it's not a big deal breaker for me. And you'll also notice I've already relocated my USB charger. There's no reason to have it up there. It's the farthest away from anything I'm going to be plugging in. I'll be having a video real soon on how you can relocate your USB cable. Stay tuned. Okay, man, that's all I got for the uh, initial quality build review for the Juiced Bike Hyper Scrambler. I uh, hope you don't think I've been too overly critical. And if I missed anything, leave it in the comments below. A lot of people are watching this and learning. And uh, there's some other people's input. Let's share ideas here. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe because I'm also going to have a review on the performance. I mean, let's be honest. The bike's still fun to ride. But the build on it is really crap. All right, man. That's all I got. Hit subscribe, and I will see ya.